House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is expected to land in Taiwan on Tuesday. The potential trip is igniting tensions between the U.S. and China to a historical high, with Beijing threatening to take action. After passing both chambers, an over $200 billion spending bill is heading to Biden's desk. Supporters say it will boost America's semiconductor manufacturing. Critics say it's a free giveaway for big corporations. The U.S. and Japan are pledging deeper cooperation in a few key industries. America's ambassador to Japan says the move will help counter China. And Australian officials are partly blaming China for inflation at home. They say it involves Beijing's strict COVID-19 policy. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is expected to visit Taiwan during her trip to Asia, possibly landing on the island Tuesday night local time. That's based on U.S. and Taiwanese media reports. The possible visit comes as tensions in the region are at a historical high, and Beijing vows to take action if Pelosi goes through with it. The Chinese regime claims Taiwan as part of its territory, even though it's never ruled the island, and it hasn't ruled out trying to take it by force. But U.S. law requires Washington to make sure the self-governing island is able to defend itself. Pelosi would be the highest-ranking official to visit the island in 25 years. American and Asian media outlets quoted sources as saying that the U.S. military is working around the clock to monitor Chinese actions to keep Pelosi safe. That includes moving aircraft carriers and large planes closer to Taiwan. On Monday, the Chinese regime threatened to take action. We would like to tell the United States once again that China is standing by and the Chinese People's Liberation Army will never sit idly by, and that China will take resolute responses and strong countermeasures. As for what measures, if she dares to go, then let's wait and see. The regime also released a video. In it, Chinese forces seem to be launching a ballistic missile that resembles a DF-17 hypersonic weapon. The U.S. side responded. But clearly, uh, we want to make sure that when she travels overseas, she can do so safely and securely, and we're going to make sure of that. Uh, th there's no reason for the Chinese rhetoric. There's no reason for uh, any actions to be taken. It is not uncommon for uh, congressional leaders to travel to Taiwan. It is very much in keeping with our policy and consistent with our support to Taiwan under the Taiwan Relations Act. Uh, we're not, we shouldn't be as a country, we shouldn't be intimidated by, by that rhetoric uh, or, or those potential actions. This is an important trip for the speaker to be on and we're gonna do whatever we can to, to support her. In Taiwan, the island's premier said his government, quote, warmly welcomes visits by foreign guests, though he did not mention Pelosi's potential visit directly. We will make appropriate arrangements to facilitate any visits by foreign guests. Of course, we respect their planning on the timing and duration and so on. Speaker Pelosi, are you planning to visit Taiwan during your trip? Pelosi already met with top Singaporean officials on Monday. The country's foreign ministry said in a statement that they welcome strong U.S. engagement in the region. Its prime minister stressed the importance of a stable U.S.-China relations to maintain peace. A sweeping spending bill totaling over $200 billion has passed both chambers of Congress. Some lawmakers hope it would increase America's edge in semiconductor manufacturing. Others are against it, saying it fails to compete with China. Where would it send money? Let's take a closer look. Laid upon the, table. the House has passed an over $200 billion bill aiming to boost U.S. competitiveness in the semiconductor industry. On this vote, the yeas are 243, the nays are 187, one member voting present. The motion is adopted. The bill now heads to President Biden's desk for him to sign into law. Here's his reaction to the news. The House has passed it. Officially dubbed the CHIPS Act of 2022, the measure would give roughly $52 billion to domestic semiconductor or microchip manufacturers. 
About $100 billion would go to the National Science Foundation to establish regional technology hubs. Why are semiconductors important? Experts say these tiny chips are the hearts and brains of all other electronics. The semiconductors are vital to every defense application from drones to hypersonic missiles. Uh, they're driving the global digital economy, everything from artificial intelligence to wind turbines or electric vehicles or solar panels. Despite the importance, over 80 percent of the chips used in the U.S. aren't made on home soil. Most of the nation's chip manufacturing has shifted to Asia, especially Taiwan. The island also manufactures over 90 percent of the world's most advanced microchips. Because of that, the pandemic-driven microchip shortage has caused massive disruptions. For one, the auto industry is projected to lose $200 billion because of a lack of chips. Back to the chip bill, its key goal is to maintain a competitive edge with China as Beijing pours money into its own domestic chip production. One of the main drivers behind the bill is Senator Todd Young of Indiana. What we're going to see in the very near term are more semiconductor uh, manufacturing companies announcing a manufacturing presence on our American soil so that we're no longer dependent on other countries for the sourcing of, of these computer chips. That Despite that support, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer stripped a provision at the last minute. It would have blocked funded manufacturers from outsourcing production to China. So that means firms will be able to outsource the manufacturing of those semiconductors to China. Before its passing, the bill also faced controversy. Senator Rick Scott explained why he's against it. Let me give you an example. Intel Corporation, I'll tell you how it's going to impact them. They're going to get, I think, $4 billion, right? On top of $4 billion to build a plant, they get a $4 billion tax write-off, and they get a 25% tax credit. So they get all that. Now, what do they have to do? There's no obligation that they build a specific chip that we need. There's no quotas. Uh, there's no standards. You know, they're a big investor in China. They can continue to invest in China. They can continue to expand in China. When China invades Taiwan, which I hope they don't, they can continue to do business in China, which they said they would. The new CHIPS Act follows a version of the measure that was approved in January 2021. Since then, Democrats and Republicans have failed to reach an agreement on how to appropriate funding for the initiative. According to the Congressional Budget Office, the CHIPS bill will increase the federal budget deficit by $79 billion over 10 years. China is leaning towards the principle of the logic of brute force over the rule of law. That's how the Japanese foreign minister described the communist regime's behavior in the Indo-Pacific region. Here's more. During a visit to Washington last Friday, Japan's foreign minister Yoshimasa Hayashi sounded the alarm about China's behavior in the Indo-Pacific. The logic of brute force is gaining more traction over the rule of law. And the strategic balance in the region is increasingly challenge for Japan and the United States. Hayashi emphasized that the Indo-Pacific is home to more than half of the world's population and accounts for nearly 60 percent of global GDP, calling it the growth engine of the world, a region filled with potential. The Japanese minister also touched on Russia's invasion of Ukraine. He said it was essential that the invasion go down as a clear failure. Otherwise, other countries would follow suit and attempt to change the status quo by force. What is happening in Ukraine must never be allowed anywhere in the world, including especially in the Indo-Pacific. We must all run the light lessons from the current situation in Europe. This in apparent reference to mounting China-Taiwan tension as the island faces a possible invasion from Beijing. Hayashi largely avoided mentioning China by name, but said it was essential to maintain candid dialogue with Beijing. He also noted that cooperation with the Chinese regime is necessary in some areas, like addressing North Korea. Chen Ni Wu, NTD News. The U.S. ambassador to Japan signed out a few areas as key to U.S.-Japanese cooperation. Those include semiconductors, batteries and energy. That says both countries deepen their ties to secure supply chains and counter China. The ambassador, Rami Manuel, says an American company is looking at a major semiconductor investment in Japan, though he declined to give details. 
He says commercial diplomacy is a major piece of an overarching economic collaboration and coordination between the United States and Japan. Japan says it will provide as much as $700 million to help U.S. firms boost memory chip output at a Japanese plant. American firms like Western Digital Corp and partner Kyoksa Holdings are set to benefit from the deal. Ambassador Emmanuel says the cooperation comes as China uses its economic strengths to pressure other countries. He also points to a pattern he's noticed from Beijing. If they don't like what you say politically, they put the muscle on you economically. The ambassador cited Japan's past experience to back it up. In 2010, Japan and China entered a dispute over a boat collision incident. Beijing later imposed a rare earth ban on Japan, only to lift it about a month later. Let's take a closer look at semiconductor cooperation. The United States and Japan plan to establish a new joint research center for next-generation semiconductors or microchips. That's amid the global shortage. Officials from the two longtime allies met Friday during an economic meeting in Washington. Chips are an essential component in nearly all electronics, from coffee machines to smartphones to fighter jets. The new R&D organization is meant to establish a secure source of them. Currently, Taiwan makes over 90 percent of the world's most advanced chips. But there is concern about supply stability as tensions rise between Taiwan and China. Beijing views the island as a renegade province and has threatened to take it by force. Details of the plan were not immediately released, but Japan's Nikkei Shimbun newspaper said research of two nanometer semiconductor chips would begin in Japan by the end of this year. It's said to include a prototype production line and should begin producing semiconductors by 2025. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for more than a year. Here's what to look out for in our second half. Has Beijing's strict COVID-19 policy contributed to Australian inflation? Plus, how is the Chinese regime reacting to the crisis in the real estate sector as a growing number of home buyers refuse to pay mortgages on unfinished projects? We take a closer look. The full episode is available on our partner platform, Appoch TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and see you tomorrow. The 2022 NTD 8th International Chinese Vocal Competition will be held from September 29th to October 2nd at the Merkin Hall of Kaufman Music Center in New York City. The competition is honored to have specially invited vocalists with the world-renowned Shen Yun Performing Arts to serve on its panel of judges. The gold award is $10,000. For more information, please visit vocal.ntdtv.com.